What's up, guys? Welcome to the Flow T Cast for episode 104. It's, a, it's, a, it's been a minute. Literally almost two weeks. Uh, it's actually Scott's fault, not my fault. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. Before we get into it, though, I'd just like to express how upset I am at the fact that you just said three, two, one before we started. And when you said two, instead of holding up a two like you normally did, you held up your entire hand like you were saying five. And I can't unlive this now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check the game tapes on that because I don't remember doing that. <laughs> no, no, it really. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's completely my fault that we missed that we missed a week. Uh, but it kind of is. You know, we both got real busy. Um, my son's in town, and I wanted to spend as much time with him as possible. I got super stressed out at work. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, uh, sir, you were actually the day we were supposed to record, and then I decided to cancel it a week. You came in and you were like, oh, I'll just, oh, I'll feel like shit, duh. <laughs> I forgot about that. You know, no, yeah, that's, um, I like, I have bad sinus problems, um, which I didn't know before I moved to Huntsville. Um, but now I know I'm allergic to this entire city, I guess. Um, but yeah, Thursday it, it hit me like a, like an actual truck, so like a wrecking um, ball. Like, yeah, came in like a wrecking ball, Miley Cyrus. Like, no, I. What's crazy is it like wasn't that bad in the morning, and then like around noon, I thought I was dead. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. My man was like passing out, and I was like, ah. I was already like <laughs> waning on it because like there was a lot going on that week, you know, starting the new job, and then like. It was my birthday that week. Shout out to me. Big 3-0. Let's go, baby. Thanks for all the birthday wishes, everyone. Um, so there was like a lot going on. Um, so I wasn't ready to do that. And also, we have decided to change our recording days, which is why this past week on Thursday, there was not a uh, Thursday episode. Thursday episode. Because Scott and I both work the same hours now, it was only fitting that Let's hit these things on a day off. <laughs> and uh, so now we're recording on Sunday morning. So um, I guess these episodes will be out on Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, Sunday night, Monday. Or right? Thursday. So, whenever whatever. I decide to drop them. <laughs> yeah. We might still drop them on Thursday, <laughs> but we record on Sunday now, you know, so. Come on, um, man. Keep you know I can't hold eyes, it. ears, nose, um, and mouth open for that. Don't keep your mouth open. That's weird. Please. Yeah. Please. Flies will fly in. It's Keep not, your eyes not open. Thing. Eyes open, ears sure. open, ears open, yeah, nose ears. open because breathing is fundamental. Very, mouth open if you're a mouth <laughs> breather, so I guess that fit, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll work. But anyway, <laughs> Scott, how are you doing, my man? Uh, less stressed than I was a week ago, I'll tell you that much, but uh, I'm doing good. Um, working every day, uh, as you know, because I've been training you, so um. So that's that. But yeah, no, working every day, working hard, um, trying to catch up back uh, at the old job facility. And then, uh, you know, like I said, my son's in town. So we just had his birthday party yesterday. So still kind of living off the hype of that. What about you, my man? Uh, you know, I guess I have to say working every day, too, because I am. <laughs> <laughs> If you guys didn't hear the last episode six months ago, uh, I took on a job <laughs> working with Scott, and we work in a tool room of this uh, place. Well, hold on. He works in the tool room. Yeah, I currently I should say, am in the tool room training him. I, I do not do. work in the tool room. I work in the tool room. Scott is working there as well because it needs caught up, and I need to be trained. And I started not last week, but the week before on Monday, and uh, it's... So far, it's good. I mean, I've been sheltered a lot because Scott is, you know, you know that meme of like the soldier who's getting shot in the back, like protecting the sleeping child. I'm the sleeping child here and Scott's <laughs> the one getting shot in the back. So it's been good. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot so far, but nah, I got no bad things to say. Uh, this as opposed to pushing carts this beats it every day of the week so like as long as you stay humble and be chilling so it's a lot of fun um i was gonna go I on don't... a 30 minute rampage on counting rivets but i'm not gonna do that bro it was gonna be so riveting what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> nah i'm just screwing with you oh my god <laughs> i think i need a bolt on out of here you know <laughs> 
<laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I'm picking uh, up no, the dad a, jokes, baby. Yeah, it's um uh, it's oh, you know what? Let me just go ahead and start this episode off with this, all right? What? I I told you this yesterday, right? But you know, just so the so the whole world gets to hear this, right? So why did Hypno have so much energy? Why? He wasn't drowsy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what's that what's that tiktok of those dudes ah, 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 ah. oh my god <laughs> no yeah so we, that's should have a, been. we should have a segment every podcast where you tell a dad joke a cringy dad joke bro oh, we Just could like, definitely make that happen there was uh a week at locals where it was rumored um as a matter of fact trevor um from our locals uh was actually going to give me like like an extra pack or something if I did it, but I have this like deck of like 300 dad jokes and I was going to shuffle them up. And every time somebody took a prize, I was going to tell them a dad joke. (laughs) (laughs) I'll probably scoop up after the first prize, bro. (laughs) Bro, I might go undefeated just because nobody wants to play me, bro. They'll be like, I don't want to hear that shit. But yeah, that's where we've been the last two weeks. A lot of changes and stuff going on. Um, and then in the last hour, apparently Pro Tools decided it had a new software, and I was on the 2020 version, so uh, we had to update that. Um, so that's pretty cool. And also, we're gonna try and do these things on video. We'll get more into that later. Um, but yeah, yeah. So. Pokemon uh, TCG. That's the first I've heard of that. So, you know, that's good. <laughs> hey, Scott, I'm glad we're not doing this one on video because I'm still on my PGA. So, oh, oh, we are. This is this will be on video. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, now you guys get to see what I look like when I wake up. Um, I, uh, fun fact, have not even brushed my teeth yet. So, that's fun. <laughs> I don't think they could smell your breath, homie. <laughs> I'm pretty right. sure they could. My breath is kicking right now. <laughs> I mean, when you walk into the work, you do smell like Dunkin' Donuts every day. <laughs> Not every day, though. Just like just recently, because I, all right, I'm lazy, guys. So I ran out of creamer like a week ago. And instead of going to the store and buying creamer or remembering to buy creamer when I'm at the store, I've just been going to Dunkin' every day for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pokemon, bro. All right, Pokemon. Here we go. This Level, is a Pokemon podcast. Yeah, we we do talk about the Pokemon TCG here. Level with me though. How much have you seen of it? <laughs> so that's what's funny, because um, we we've talked about this, right? I haven't played at locals in a couple of weeks, right? I haven't played like actual Pokemon in a couple of weeks, um, and I haven't really talked about Pokemon. Uh, but I've been playing every day. I've played more since I've taken a break. That I used to when like every day I would be thinking about it for the podcast or whatever. So uh, I've played more now that I haven't cared about Pokemon than I used to. But um, I, I got news for you with the meta. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. <laughs> I'm actually looking at the Limitless Showdown of July. And... uh I see a lot of uh, Palkia and Teleons, uh, uh, Arceus and Teleons, and if I'm not mistaken, when we took our break, those were still there. <laughs> yeah, uh, one interesting deck from the Limitless Showdown that I was going to specifically mention as I was looking at it last night, uh, this Arceus Mute- Mewtwo V Union deck, they got like, what was it, fifth or sixth? Uh, yeah, I got top eight. Top eight, yeah, seventh. Yeah. Uh, that's actually insane. I would not have thought that that worked as well as it does, but it uh, turns out being able to search for two cards makes V unions highly useful. I think what I like about this, uh, this deck, besides the fact that it's literally you're running Arceus V stars pretty much until you can get your V unions out, is like the thing that's cool about Arceus is you don't have to focus on research, right? Right. You know, I mean, this deck plays four researches, but you have the, the you've always had that pivot where you could like play different kind of supporters because you have that star birth ability available to you. So like, for example, 
let's say you have the nuts, right? You start Arceus V and you have an Ultra Ball and two V unions in deck, right? Next, you Ultra Ball those two V unions and then you grab Adventurer's Discovery and an Ultra Ball. And then now turn two, you're getting a V union out. Right. Which is insane. And I mean, you can play things like Peonia, of course, because you're probably going to have your V unions prized. My luck, I'll have all four of them prized, but that's just how it goes. Like. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing you can do about that other than, you know, take prizes to begin with. But Yeah, I and know. I mean, it's... that's what's cool about this list, too, is because, like, even if you're not, it, like, V-Union is cool, but, like, you can just chain Arceus's. Like, right. Does he play a pal pad? Yeah, he does play a pal pad, because I did see the one Sharon's care, and I was like, that's kind of low. I don't even know if what you're... Professor Burnett does. If you're only playing one Sharon's Care in an Arceus build, you have to have Palpad. I, I would actually venture to say Palpad belongs in... Let's be kind of conservative and say 80% of decks nowadays, right? Yeah, I, I agree. Like For me, it's like playing Inteleon, I, want a, I always want a Palpad. Like, I always do. Um, but, I mean, Especially you don't... if you're chaining like if you're at the point late game where you're chaining um, Drizzles and then the Inteleon at the end, right? Mm -hmm. There's always that play where you could just like Drizzle for a pal pad and then evolve into an Inteleon on another one or whatever to essentially have a VS Seeker, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, always having, like, when I play Palkia, always having Melanie when you, after you've used the. Uh, I don't even remember Star Portal. Is that the name of the, the yeah. name of the uh, V Star attack? Sure. Um, but like always having that, and then having like a boss at any time, especially when you're playing boss or having uh uh Arita. Yeah. But apparently, speaking of Palkia, it's still good. It got second. Kaido Yoshihara, Yoshihara, I hope I said that name right, got second at the Limitless Showdown. Um, Not running the one rare candy. I don't know about that, buddy. No, I'm just playing. I don't but like he did not I have don't a like the one of them. He did not have a pal pad in his list. We're over here talking shit about 80% of the Yeah, list. but the dude's Japanese. They play a completely different game. Like, I, I'm pretty sure that, like, I don't know, man. The The difference between Japanese lists and American lists are so absurd to me that, like, I don't know how they work and they function the way they do a lot of times, but somehow they still can compete. You know, like, they're two completely... You're, it's almost like you're playing two completely different games and somehow it still works against each other, so... Yeah, that is fair. But still, dog, Palpat is always nice. It's it's just nice, but I mean you don't really need it either. Look at us contradicting ourselves. I like, for me personally, I would play a one pal pad on my list. It usually. gives you late game options that you yeah. wouldn't otherwise have. That's exactly well. That's what it's for, right? Like, um, in the uh, Thursday Madness, there was a uh, War Beetle that got top sixteen. How does that make oh, you feel? Oh yeah, where's that at? I wanted to actually talk about that because. I've been, um, where is that at? It's the, I don't know how to say the first part, the Y-O-S dash E-F-I Thursday Madness season seven. 98 week six. people, so a pretty yeah. decent sized tournament and an ore beetle. I think actually an ore beetle won a tournament. I thought I read somewhere. I mean, looking at this list, it makes sense, right? It's, you're just healing, you're switching, you know, you got Vigor. I So when I saw Vigor, I never once thought of Ore Beetle. And if I did, oh, I probably wow. mentioned it on the podcast. And um, I would like to give myself credit for that if it did happen. But I <laughs> forgot about it. So, um, But no, yeah, that makes this deck absolutely insane. Ore Beetle's always been a strong card. It's just been like, how do you get it there, right? And now now we can get there. So, so um, like, for example, I mean, you're pinging damage counters on everything, right? Right. So, like, let's say you do, like, can you switch three at a time, or is it just once? I guess you could play Switch, Bird Keeper, Air Balloon. Yes. Yeah, so yeah you, could get... you could possibly do it four times if yeah. you, like, get crazy. 
So like you can switch two or three times, most likely per turn, and then Cheryl can heal off damage. Um, which this thing is kind of a tank. It's well three ten, but like Paul K is not really hitting three ten if you're max or minimizing your bench space, and this deck looks like it just does that. Yeah, you don't need much. Uh, you have and you have the mill tank for stall, um, and the rallet to pop the um, the sobbles in the bench. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, like, you just ping that damage around, and then, like, you swing for, if it's got three energy on it, you're swinging for 200 with a choice belt, if you're playing a choice belt. I didn't see if they're playing a choice belt. They're not. But, I mean, you can swing for, like, 200, 230 with a choice belt if you're doing that, plus the damage counters. You could kind of reach some insane numbers while also, like, tanking hits and shareling and then just re-accelerating with Gardenia's Vigor because Orb Beetle VMAX's attack only requires two energies, and there you go, two energies. So, I li I, I think this deck is really cool. I wonder how, like, actually good it is with, uh, with people wanting to try that Radiant Charizard, which I've heard a little bit that that's gone down in, I don't want to say down in play, but, like, people are discovering that the turn that you want to use your Radiant Charizard, you're probably getting Roxanne, and it's really hard to get all the pieces out to do Charizard. Right. Um. So I've heard, like, it's not as good as people are saying it is, but I still think, in theory, the card is good. Like, I mean, you don't revolve your strategy around it, but, like, it's a good option to have in a situation that calls for itself. Um, so I was actually talking to uh, old Aaron Rucker about that the other day. Um, and we kind of came to the same conclusion that like, that's the case, but in a situation where you can set up like multiple threats, right? So if you set up a threat that is Roxanne proof, then they're probably going to have to expend that turn to take care of that threat rather than Roxanne, right? Uh -huh. And then, then you win. So it's like a checkmate card, right? So... It's almost like if you play it, it's just so you could put your opponent in a position where they know they can't come out of it, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. But you can't count on it to be your win con. Yeah. So what do you think, man? Like, do you think this is good? The fact that the meta hasn't really shifted all too much leading into worlds that's in... Holy shit, a couple of weeks. <laughs> so... So, yeah, um, I actually, I, and I've been thinking about this a lot. I really love this for this season. And I say that, like, with a grain of salt. Like, I love it because um, the the play that we're going to get for Worlds this year, the play that's going to be streamed, because I'm not going, um, I'm going to be watching every single moment that they stream. The play that we're going to get is going to be the highest caliber, most prepared play that we could possibly have got, right? Um, this will be the longest format that we've had leading up to Worlds that I am aware of. I mean, it may not be completely, but uh, that I'm aware of, that I have seen. And nobody is focusing on the new set or n new things dropping or anything. Everybody that's going to Worlds is playtesting this format. And playtesting it hard. So I don't think we're going to see any surprises. I don't think we're going to see any new decks. I think people have figured out everything there is. So it'll just strictly come down to who's the better player. And I'm really excited to like finally see a format where, you know, that is the case, right? You may like, there's always a chance that somebody has been holding something in their back pocket for like three decades. Right. But you know, generally speaking, the deck builders of this game have already built all the decks that are going to be built. So this is what we got. So we will have the best play that we've ever seen. Um, not that I'm against the brand new format worlds, because that is like a completely different skill set that kind of puts emphasis on the deck builders themselves. Um, yeah. But this is like strictly this is the players worlds, right? So um, next year, if we have a brand new set drop right before worlds, you know, great. That's that'll get me excited for completely other reasons but this is this is the player's world so this will be where like you know Stefan Ivanhoff and Tord Redcliffe and you know um 
Isaiah Bradner. This is the one that like we're going to see them duke it out because they're the best players right now, right? This is not the one where we're going to see you know Joe Schmo that put together sixty cards that don't even make sense together, but somehow they completely like break the meta. Yeah. Um, he doesn't make it. You know what I mean? I, I think it'll be definitely very interesting. I like this kind of worlds as opposed to the one like I think it was like. 2017 2018 where they drop a set right before rotation it's only legal for worlds and then that's it yeah um like I, double puzzle of time or quasi yeah <laughs> you, you literally have one weekend to try that out and yeah. uh if you didn't well damn that sucks but like i like this one a lot because it does give you that time to really fully prepare for what's gonna happen at worlds um and i think that even the world's like the way it's formatted, you know, the day one, day two kind of thing. Like, I think that's going to be really cool as well, just because like day ones, you could see the ore beetles of the world, right? You know, you could see people trying to get into day two because they shocked the world with the ore beetles, or you could see the soul rock lunatone deck. I don't even know if people still like that, but Hey, you're not going to see that. Deck. <laughs> but Hey, you know, what? that had its, just like the Reggie's that had its moment. And it's fucking gone. <laughs> get that fucking shit out of here all right like you could see the world like those kind of decks make it in and then day two is when it's like an absolute barn burner where it's just like straight consistency um straight like play to win and all the cool shit or it could be the opposite look i've never played in a world championship and if i ever did i'd go oh three drop and i'd be in the open anyway so like you know but uh no, it's going to be good. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the fact that also that rotation's not happening like right after Worlds, like you get to try the Worlds winning decks in that format, which is super cool. And I mean, you could still try them anyway because who knows how they stack up with Lost Origins coming in soon after. I think like a couple weeks after that, Lost Origins is going to be back. And Scott might have his mojo back and whoop my ass at work and tell me to make videos. But like, it's good. It's. It, I think it's a good thing. I think they set this one up well, especially for the situation that, you know, caused that this is supposed to be the 2020 Worlds, and here we are almost three years later. So it's going to be good, I think. The other thing that, like, is interesting to think about is there's a possibility that they just did it this way for the players that are still going to Worlds but haven't come back to play yet. You know, so now they have, like the utmost time to prepare. I don't know who that is or how many players there is, but the ones that qualified long before COVID and they haven't played, but because they have their qualification, they're going to worlds now, but they haven't played yet the season, right? Because whatever, they're getting back in the swing of things. I don't know. So like, I think it's maybe an accident, maybe not. I don't know, but I think Pokemon doing it this way and having like giving us this preparation time really gives them a fair shot. Um, as we, opposed to let's we, drop another set that you haven't played with yet. Right. You know, we said us like we're prepping for worlds, bro. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just speaking as a general player base here. <laughs> um, remember how I said, this is the players worlds, right? And like the best players would do the best this worlds. This is the worlds that like, I'd sit down in my first round and look at my slip and it would already say, Oh, four somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Start out the gate. Oh, four. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. <laughs> this is the world you'd sit down and promptly get right back up. <laughs> like, I don't even think I'd take out my deck box at this world's because it is, you know, such a prepared world, right? I think I would just sit down and be like, well, that was a good game, man. Nice to meet you. Here's a float TK dice. <laughs> but hey, if you're playing in Worlds, you got to prep, uh, prepare for it. And the best way to prepare for Worlds is on PTCGO. And the best place to get codes is PTCGOstore.com. And you can it's get in the you name. Yeah, dog. Like, look, PTCGO ptcgo store it just add store.com and you can get all your codes at a reasonable price and very quickly you can just get an email with like five million codes in there and you get a five percent discount from flow tcast all you got to do is at checkout 
in the apply promo code section, type in FlowTCast, F-L-O-W-T-K-A-S-T, and get your 5% off at ptcgostore.com. You know what I appreciate most about them emailing those codes, though? Is the one-click copy. Yeah, Like, you just click the copy, and then you just control V. And you just click the copy and control V. Like, it makes it so much faster. Also, if you if you didn't know, you can input codes on the actual website, too. Which is pretty convenient for that. Oh, on uh, Pokemon or PC Pokemon? Studio. No, Pokemon dot com. Like the actual, oh, okay. there's like a redeem codes thing. Oh, so, and you could do like ten at a time, right, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So that's that pretty would, convenient too. That might make it quicker if I wasn't, you know. Bro, I've seen how you use Excel, dog. I imagine you're single handedly typing two fingers like this. No, claw, that what's, claw what's fingers. messed up. <laughs> What's messed up is like uh, I am so out of the loop when it comes to most computer programs, um, except for projects. Um, I'm really good at projects, um, which is absurd. But uh, I can type fast. <laughs> and well, I man, think that's like from, my man can't from, mass from when I used to be good at computers, you know, whatever. But like I can type fast, you know, old Counter-Strike days when you only had like three seconds to type out the, you know, slur that you wanted to throw at your opponent. <laughs> I dog, I'll be playing like Final Fantasy 14 online or something and be in the middle of a raid and like people are typing in the chat box beside me and I'm like leaving it on red because I don't know how to <laughs> I can't play a game and then go type and then play a game. So they're like, yo, floaty cast, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> But speaking of worlds and plebs like Scott and I, who didn't get our invite, there is a London Open that is happening. It is happening. And at the time of recording, I don't even have to look. It's sold out. <laughs> we are so late to announcing this. <laughs> I'm kind of glad uh, that they are having an open uh, just because... They should like. I love the. I love the idea of the open. The open's always been like one of the coolest aspects of worlds. Um, I'm incredibly surprised that they're doing it though. I I am too, but not at the same time, right? Like I I'm sure it's capped at like 200 people or something. Um, honestly, if somebody got registered for the London Open and want to tell us how many people are are invited to that. I'm sure there's a harder cap on it than it would be here in America. But, like, I think it's cool because, like, it gives the spectators who got a spectator pass to be able to do something other than get a ticket to wait for a chance to get a Pokemon Center exclusive merch. But, like, you know, and and then you have side events and stuff like that. Um, If you're going to do Worlds, you got to do it right, right? You know, have the open. Let everybody play. Or let a select few play because it probably so- sold out in 28 seconds. Um, you probably didn't even get to refresh your screen and it was already gone. Um, but like, it's I think it's really sweet and cool that they're going to do something like this. Especially for this world's the first world's back since the pandemic. But like you, I'm kind of shocked as well. You know. I mean, like, just because Europe and I don't know what the limit for the facility that they got in London is. Uh, I mean, I'm sure we could do some research and figure it out. But just like worlds here, the worlds that I have been to have always been so massive already. Right. And like, there's just so many spectators and so many people just outside, you know, and like maybe they don't have everything going on with Pokemon Go that they normally do. But like. I mean, it's always been huge, like the biggest convention. And like, even if NAIC is like an inkling as to the size of worlds, we're talking like massive numbers. And like, just to throw in, oh, oh, hey, here's another reason to come. It seems like during COVID times, you know, kind of like, why? You know, but I'm sure they're taking the necessary precautions and things like that. Right. Just like they have been with all the rest of the events and stuff. So, uh, you know, I'm I 
I guarantee it was on their minds. Like, should we, should we not, should we, should we not? And then, you know, for the vast majority of the events, everything ran smoothly. Everybody was adhering to the policies and procedures and things. And they know that, you know, players take it just as seriously as, you know, the, the event holders and stuff like that. So I think that's why they are okay with doing it. But man, like limited numbers and things like, I really for sure thought that the open wasn't going to happen just because of size capabilities, but you know, here we are, Yeah, which is good because, you know, now we know, you know, people are going to come out of the gate with points because we don't have cups and challenges going. And normally right now we would already have cups and challenges for the next season happening. Right. Or if not right now, next month. Yeah. And now it's like the London open is going to be the only points before. God, could you imagine season starts. if like, like, the London Open was like the amount of points you can get for Worlds. You know, it's like Worlds is only 200, but it's in South Africa. <laughs> and they're like, if you win the London Open, you get a Worlds invite. They won't do that. I'm just talking shit. We all know where it's going to be next year. It's, uh, it's, be it's regional level. It's however much you get for winning a regional. Yeah. Is you get. yeah. yeah. So but like it, in Europe, that's like, I think Europe only needs like 350 or something. So you're almost there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, and but like I mean, OGN we all know it's going to be smaller. in Detroit anyway because Detroit was on the uh, on the uh, all time places list in 2022. So like, <laughs> yeah, but so was like Zimbabwe, bro. Like, I don't understand where that list you got was from, bro. It's from Time Magazine. <laughs> yeah, no, Time Magazine is, needs to take a time out because that list didn't make any sense whatsoever. Bro, do you have like the what like the uh, the Space Center up in? Or the, yeah, the, the International South. Space Center. So it was like the best places to live on this in this world. And I'm like, yo, that's in outer space. That's not even. Oh. <laughs> Is that what we're like? Let me just go ahead and like book a vacation to the moon right quick, then, because it's orbiting this Earth too. Hey, so dog. let me just. <laughs> hey, dog, I've been to the moon. All right, I just played a whole video game where I was in the moon. So there's little rabbits, um, that reside on the moon, dog. Yeah, lunar rabbits. Yeah, yeah, dog. What do you I know? I think you're loony. That's what I think. <laughs> dog, I put in the talking note points, world registrations, and I don't even know why. <laughs> oh, because they're out. See... They happened. We already talked about it. It's sold yeah. out. <laughs> That's funny. I do. You know, like I did. I didn't realize how much I missed the people posting, like that they got the email inviting them to the worlds. Like that's always like a proud dad moment for people that I don't even know. But like, I always look at it and I'm like, you made it kid. I'm, I'm proud of you. Like you made it out. Like I've never once seen one of those emails, you know, like I get kind of fed up with the deck list posts and stuff like that sometimes. Like, hey. especially if it's the same deck list, it's been you know, hey, posted a hundred times. Chill. That's all I play locals with is the same deck list. Yeah, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like the people that are like, oh, I won the 1K with this deck list and it's the same one. Like, uh, you know, I, I'll never knock you for posting your winning. Please continue doing that because, you know, I'd love to see people succeed, right? Like I always get the same. I always get like, you know, happy when I see that. But it's like I look at the deck list and it's like the same deck list. And I'm like, yeah, you probably could have just avoided posting this. But I'd never get tired of the people posting their email. That's like I made it to Worlds because it's always like, yeah. Yeah, I'm proud of you too. I'm glad you made it. Like I may not even know you. I may we may have actually fought, like fist fought back in elementary school. And I'm still like, yeah, bro. Glad you did it. Yeah. I I, I am proud of all the people that get it. Ex except for the ones that get it every year. I'm not proud of no, them. I'm it's still, no, I'm still no, it's expected. No, it's not I'm just it's playing. never expected. I'm still proud of you. <laughs> I'm just playing, bro. Chill, chill, chill. Relax. No, nah, it is no. awesome to see all the all the, um, Except for Raul. Raul Reddy, I'm not proud of you. It's expected. <laughs> he said he was going to win NAIC and didn't. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, I love you, Raul. But I, I'm proud of you for many other reasons, but making the world is not it. <laughs> 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 On that note, we're going to take a break. <laughs> and when we come back, uh, apparently Lost Origins is officially revealed fully. Um, and uh, there's some leaks we got to talk about without spoiling anything. We'll be right back. 
Support for the Floaty Cast was brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer from FloatyCast. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code FLOATYK20 at manscaped.com. Listen, we all put a lot of work into our deck. Now it's time to take care of our dice bags as well. There is absolutely no reason to look like a tangle downstairs. It's time to teach yourself some HM1 and cut that bush down. The Performance Package 4.0 will give you just the tools to do that. In it, you'll find a lawnmower 4.0, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver, Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all the goodies. The Lawnmower 4.0 might be the greatest ball trimmer ever. I mean, it'll make your Pokeballs look like Master Balls in no time flat. Its advanced skin safe technology uses ceramic cutting edge blade to reduce grooming accidents. It's also waterproof and comes with a 400K LED spotlight. This means you could be looking your best whether using surf along the coast of Cinnabar or bumping into walls of Rock Tunnel. You thought that was good, but want to level up your grooming even more? The Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. It's waterproof and includes the same skin safe technology which helps reduce nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate nose holes. I mean, I have a nose like Nose Pass, so you know this was a must for me. Their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner will change the way you approach hygiene routine as well. Trust me, just like Nurse Joy, it'll have your partner saying, we hope to see you again. I love these, but my rare candies? Love them even more. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to the Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and the Shed Travel Bag. It's time to take care of yourself, so run, bike, surf, or fly over to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with FLOWTK20. Once again, that's 20% off and free shipping with code FLOWTK20 at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Nurse Joy was telling me that she hoped to see me again earlier thanks to manscape and i really appreciate that uh, <laughs> bro you think that's hilarious bro, bro. that's I'm like still the best laughing. part of the ad read i still laugh about that every day i think about that we hope to see you again now i'll never be able to play a pokemon <laughs> game the same way ever again but speaking of pokemon and all th- cool things aside lost origins has officially been revealed all of it in its flesh and the first pokemon honestly and i think really the only pokemon we need to talk about unless there's other things that you've pointed seen um is this aerodactyl v star if i can find it because it's very interesting and i wanted your take on it i've actually been stewing on this for like two weeks aerodactyl v star has 260 hp has a fighting in two colorless attack that says lost dive 240 put the top three cards of your deck into the lost zone but it has a v-star power for one colorless energy ancient v-star or ancient star as this as long as this pokemon is in play it gains an ability with the effect your opponent's pokemon v in play have no abilities what do you think I would rather play Path of the Peak. And I, so, and here's why, right? Because, um, and I may be out of pocket here, but isn't there a card coming out that like devolves? Aren't we getting like a de- the evolution spray or something like that? Is there one? Uh, I thought there was. But regardless, if there's not, then that's fine too. Um, it it has 260 HP and it gets knocked out, right? Like you're not really doing anything that you couldn't do with Path of the Peak with this card. The Lost Dive 240 for one attack is sick, right? Like that's the reason this card is good. The V Star power is not, or V Star. It's an attack. It's not even a power. Yeah, it's an attack. Yeah, no, that's not good. I'm not. So now you're leaving it in the active with 260 HP. Right? You've already had to set up just like your opponent. So unless you're doing this 
turn two going, if you went first, you're going turn two and you're using this before they set up. This is not, this is not good. And the only reason that would be good is if, you know, they're not playing Palkia and they already have all the energy and stuff they need. Right. Like that's, it's, you'd much be much better off by not promoting this, wasting an attack to do it and just playing path to the peak and calling it a day. I, I think I agree for sure. Like I, I think the I think the attack is very interesting, right? Um, just because I don't know of a Pokemon that gains an ability off an off an attack like that, right? Um, and if it's in an ability, wouldn't that be shut off by Path to the Peak? Anyhow, yeah. So that's it's yeah. again. I mean, if you're playing Path to the Peak to shut off this ability, the you're dumb, right? Cancel yeah. and Cologne would be a much better card to play against this card because. You know, then you can still use yours, but yeah, um, yeah, you just I, respond with a canceling cologne. Yeah, and then you would just do whatever you want to do, right? So that's that's uh, this this attack is not good. The first attack is absolutely insane, and I love this card for it. Um, this would be a good like, you know, you could play it with because what two forty minus twenty because you're probably using double turbo, right? So that's two twenty plus belt is two fifty, right? Plus, you know, whatever. I, I don't know what other damage modifiers there are right now, but 250 is not a bad number. 270, if you could just naturally power it up, is oh, no, you're using Chip Chip Ice Axe. You could definitely power this thing up. Uh, a little bit. The Gutsy Pickaxe. A but, Gutsy Pickaxe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> whatever. One of those axes. Um, yeah, you don't need to use Double Turbo with this. I mean, I love this card, um, not for its V Star ability, though. If it was an ability, this would be much better. Evolve it onto the bench, flip over your V-Star marker. Now your opponents don't have any V-Star powers, but you still have all yours. Is and really you powerful. you can attack that turn. Yeah. And you can attack that turn. They, then that makes this actually great. Like, best card, best fighting card out for a while. I won't say best card in the set because Giratina exists, but... Oh, um, Giratina's nasty, dog. <laughs> but because this is an attack, it just gets infinitely shit on by better options, so... Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, you can make a deck out of this, right? Especially because of the Lost Zone things. Like, I think there's some... I think I've been seeing some lists, not with Aerodactyl per se, but just, like, in general. Like, some of the key... I was looking at the support Pokemon more than the attackers. And then, uh, I'm trying to find it. It wasn't Bayonet. What was the other one? Uh, was it Sableye? No, this Comfy, right? So there's this comfy with flower picking. It's a, uh, once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one of them into your hand, and then put the other into the Lost Zone. Like, you have things to, like, accelerate into the Lost Zone, right? And if Aerodactyl's, like, your main attacker doing 240, um, with this Sableye that you can play, um, it has this attack that's really cool. You know, it does, uh, for one, Psychic Energy... It's if you have 10 or more cards in the lost zone, put like 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. And like paired with that Aerodactyl, that Aerodactyl says you put what three cards in to the lost zone after doing 240 or whatever. So like you're missing knockouts a little bit because like you know you're only doing like 240 or or was it 240 or 250? I can't even remember. It's 240 plus yeah. choice belt is 270, right? So Yeah, plus you're doing 270, but if you're playing with like a double turbo energy or something, you're doing 250. 250, yeah. So like if you're like pepper in a Palkia, pepper in another Palkia and then like while shutting off their abilities and then cleaning up with Sableye because like you can do that. Um I think the lost zone stuff in general is like super interesting because I this is the first time that I've personally played that there's decks that like play. I don't want to say play out of the lost zone, but require the lost zone. You know what I'm saying? And um, like we did have like the lost blender things and then lost March was the thing, but like big, big decks like the Giratina poster boy decks. They even have a cool aura design around them. Like that's, I think that's cool. So I'm excited for this set. Uh, I hope it doesn't push Hisuian Zoroark V-Star out of the format before I could even get a chance, but it probably will because that's how Pokemon work. Well, the, the thing that I'm noticing about this, right, and what's crazy, and I didn't think about it, is um, I don't think decks like Hisuian Zoroark are going to be pushed out of the picture because resource management. 
right? Like, so the lost zone counts on you just not getting these cards back. And a lot of these cards are just random cards, like discard three cards from the top of your deck. And with all the recovery cards we have, that doesn't necessarily seem like a bad idea, except for they're going to the lost zone and you'll never see them again. So yeah. these decks are like super high roller in the sense of like, hey, you know, you're just losing them, period. There's yeah. there's no getting them back. So <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I like them. They seem super powerful. Like all of the lost zone mechanics, uh, I'm glad they did it this way rather than the way they did it with Lost March. Um because Lost March was a cool deck, but let's face it, that was the only cool thing to be done with the Lost Zone. This is like, there's like three or four different archetypes to which could be bad, could be good. Um, and one that we know is going to be good uh, out of this set. So um, it's super sick. Yeah. The Bayonet card, I don't know if you looked at the art on the Bayonet, but... Um, is it Juice? Oh, I guess that's with all the Lost Zone cards, isn't it? Yeah, the little aura thing around it. Yeah, I, I just thought yeah. that was on the Bayonet. Now... Wow, wow that's that's on everything. That's what that's I'm saying. Sick. Like they really they they really did the lost zone justice this time, is what I'm saying. Like was it Sable I mimic you could be a death, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> Sable I Dragonball, bro. Oh no, you, you hit one with you hit once with Sable or you hit twice with Sable Eye and you're one shotting everything with Mimic you. I'm a I'm a shit dog. Because <laughs> speaking of that mimic you I remember specifically I did not talk about it. <laughs> I should have because this card is incredible. <laughs> Mimikyu, out of Lost Origins. It is a basic Pokemon, 70 HP. It has two attacks. Perplex, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused for one psychic energy. Super busted. I'm just kidding. Worst gift for a psychic and a colorless. It does 10 times... 10 damage times the for each times 10 damage for each damage counter on all of your opponent's Pokemon. My boy. My boy Dragapult. My boy Dragapult puts damage counters everywhere. My boy Mimikyu cleans it up. It don't matter. It's a single prize or cleanup Pokemon. I love this card. <laughs> It's a Raihan away from keeping the doctors away. And I'm talking about the mental doctors from scooping me up because they keep playing Dragapult. <laughs> this card is incredible, bro. What do you think about it? Uh, it's sick. I, I like it. Um, uh, you know, I love these types of decks or these types of combos. Anyhow, you know, I, um, I actually didn't think about the implications with Dragapult at all. I'm already like, in my mind, it's a single prizer deck that is Sableye. Mimikyu. Um is there like a I, is there like a way you could uh I'm sure there is, right? There's like a way you can put a lot of things in the lost zone without like big attacks like Giratina or Yeah, we already talked about it. There's the uh, items, there's a oh, sh there's things like quiet, that. Yeah, so. be quiet, bro. I, I've totally been focusing on Pokemon the last two weeks. Okay. <laughs> oh no, bro, Lost City, like... dog. Lost City. Did we talk about Lost, lost City? City? Yeah, yeah, we, we talked did. about Lost City. Um, doo -doo -doo. So there's Lost Sweeper, um, which you put a card from your hand to the Lost Zone, and then you choose either a Pokemon Tool or a Stadium in play and put it to the Lost Zone. Oh my goodness, bro. If you can get like a pair of sleeves or a thing of sleeves with like one of these colors, i.e. like the, uh, what is it, the Petrol Sleeve colors or something, to match with your Lost Zone deck. That would look so clean. Yeah. <laughs> Colrus's Experiment puts a lot of cards in the Lost Zone. It's three of them. You you pick five up, and then you put three of them into your hand, and then you put the rest of them into... Or three of them in your hand, and two of them in the Lost Zone. So that's two in the Lost Zone. Potentially two from the Lost Vacuum thing. So that's four. And then Giratina says... Wait, what's the other one? There's like a mirror thing. What's the mirror? Uh, oh, you can only play it if you have seven or more. Seven in the or more, zone. yeah. So that's that's four. Giratina puts two, but you gotta set that up. I mean, you could with Arceus, I guess. Yeah, oh, a lot well, of Abyss Seeker. So that's four right there with just those two cards, right? The Sweeper and Colrus. Yeah. And then like Abyss Seeker, that's six. 
He could get there. He can get to seven real easy and then power that thing up. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. What uh, What are some other ones? And they're like one that like... Oh, oh yeah. I forgot. The Comfy. The Comfy yeah. that l- lets you put one in there. There you go. There's six. There's seven immediately. Bro, this Bennett is good though. Yeah, the Bennett is good. Put a supporter from your discard pile, reveal it, and put it into your hand. If you do, put this Pokemon into the Lost Zone. So, like, that's two, because you got to put the Shuppet. I thought you could, like, attach things to it and throw it in the Lost Zone, but I guess not. Lame. Whatever. I'm still a real big fan of this baby Dragable, too. I know it's a stage two, but. You literally get the attack off one time, isn't it? Like. Yeah. Oh no, it's you discard all of them and then you gotta bring them all right back. <laughs> no, but that little Mimikyu is badass, dog. I think it's good in Dragapult. I don't know if Dragapult's gonna be good, but I think it's good in Dragapult for sure. I mean, I don't know, bro. Everybody's gonna be playing Giratina. And yes. I think Giratina just wrecks Dragapult. It hits for 310, it's short. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, there's other things, zigzagoon pings or whatever. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. It's short. <laughs> and it'll never hit those numbers. It can't. It can't, dog. And you know what else can't happen? The fact that the entire sword or scarlet and violet thing leaking. They didn't all it. leak. It mostly leaked. No, there's, there's a, no, no. So, so here's the thing with the leaks, right? So the leaks are coming from two people. And if you pay attention to the leaks and you, you would know of them at this point, right? There is, yeah. uh, the Riddler coup who leaks things in a funny way. And then there's this new guy who apparently has like a beta version and he's been leaking like the blurriest screenshots known to <laughs> mankind. <laughs> How they all do, bro. I don't know if like that's just like trying to uh trying to like loophole like the laws because if you post like crystal clear high def 4K versions of the game, uh like you know, Pokemon's coming for that ass. Yeah, um, I mean I would venture to say you he could probably whatever he's got to be close or somebody he knows is close. Um, they would probably lose their job if they ever found out. But there, I don't think there'd be any legal implications at this point. Uh, but it's also like fun. So one thing I will say about the Pokemon leakers is they're all having fun with it. They're not just like, oh, hey, here's this thing, right? They're all like, it's either riddles or you got to figure it out or something like that, you know? So um, there is a lot of information we know, though. Um, but it's all like pineal. I don't know even know if that's a word. Um, like really small, like little aspects that people are getting excited about. You know, the game itself is still not leaked at all oh well that's good i've been trying my damnedest all right i will say like usually when it comes to like games being leaked uh if it's a story i don't mind it but like i don't play pokemon for the story i couldn't even fucking tell you what happened in sword and shield bro like i play pokemon I forgot that had a story. My son was playing through and he asked me how to do one part. And I'm like, well, I, uh, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> like story driven games like um, Final Fantasy X. I'll just throw that out there because that's the late, last story driven game I've played. Um, if you leak the story, like that's a problem. That's like the shows. Like, I don't want to know what happens in the show. But like if you leak the Pokemon, which I said this time, I'm on record saying I don't want to see the new Pokemon unless they're officially revealed uh, because I want to try that. I'm already failing, but like (laughs) I want to try that aspect Um, just so I can see what it feels like to be like, yo, what the fuck is that, dog? Like when I run up on it, when I get Impy Dim 2, (laughs) like that's the name. Impy Dim 2 is its name. Um, It's already been leaked. Uh, (laughs) Just a purple version of Impy Dim. It's a... Dark Ghost. It actually looks like Sableye. <laughs> but but like I I wanna I wanna try and have that like that feeling like, oh my god, I've never seen this Pokemon. And like afterwards be like Okay. Just leak me the fucking game. I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. Um so 
I, I don't know. Like I, I always, there's always a line to draw. Like if you're leaking the story, that's, that's, that's a no go. Um, except for Pokemon, because I really, I, honest, honest to God, I couldn't tell you like what happened in any of them. And I have played every single game. Yeah. Um, I don't even I know. I mean, I can tell you what happened in the majority of them. You, you, you know, left as a kid, somehow ended up battling an evil organization um, that thought that they were single handedly. Other, yeah. Other than Team Rocket thought that they were doing better for the world. Um, Team Rocket was the only actual evil organization that was just like, you know, money. Um, you beat eight gym leaders. Uh, one of them was most likely either the champion or um somebody in the elite four already or um part of the evil organization depending on the game um and then um and then you went and battled the elite four and then in one of them you had to set that up so you just beat kahunas instead or whatever they were called i didn't even realize i was setting that up in sword or sun and moon (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just was like, "Yo, how the fuck is this game gonna finish?" And the next thing you know, I'm battling the champion, which makes sense as to why that region is the region that Ash became champion. Yeah. Now there's an asterisk there. He's not really a champion. No. Nah, He's about to get his ass was. kicked in this one. Probably. Have you have you seen that? Like, what's going no, on with that? No, I haven't watched any of the new ones. Um, Me neither. Just because my son stopped watching it. So yeah. I haven't watched it any either, but like, it's like, I kind of get the gist of it. You can like literally read like two articles and know what the whole story is about. But like, um, Ash is playing in the world coronation. Like he's in the world coronation tournament. He's in top eight and top eight is like every champion. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) so like, I think he went up against Steven from gen three and then he's going up against like cynthia or something and then like I, i'm pretty sure at the end of it he's gonna face leon in the finals but like obviously because leon's the big guy from gen eight like and then help if he wins i don't know what else he's got left to do bro he beat every champion <laughs> like, what if what if he just like they threw it for a loophole and ash faces against red as the final, final battle? Yeah. The cha- <laughs> they would have to end the series, bro. <laughs> like, They'd be like, like by the d- way, th- this is something that's been well well discussed in the video games, but the anime has not discussed the fact that Pokemon exist in different universes. Um, so here you have Red and the guy that was based off of Red for the anime, Ash, battling against each other, and Red's about to whoop that ass. <laughs> what if... What if at the end of it they're playing again? <laughs> he's got to fight Red, <laughs> and he's about to like they pull some like Yu Gi Oh shit. He's like about to beat Red, and Red's hanging on the cliff like Kaiba was, trying to face Pegasus. And then like Ash is like, "No, don't!" And he's like, "Call an ambulance, <laughs> but not for me." <laughs> and shoots Ash. <laughs> 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 oh my god. The whole thing just goes into like a downward spiral. Pokemon gets <laughs> bankrupt. <laughs> no, actually um that'd be fucked up. No, yeah, like that I, would be <laughs> fucked up. As I was like thinking it in my head it got worse. <laughs> I, I think it would be absolutely hilarious if Pokemon was just like done with the anime. Um, on the last episode, they just like they zoom out and it's just been a little kid playing Ash the whole time. Like Ash is just the reason he keeps resetting is because it's the same kid that just keeps like dying in a, a video game. game. Yeah. No, he just gets a new game. Like so he gets the next version. And so like he always uses Pikachu, right? But his Pikachu's level five again. And it's always the same character, but that's why he's never aged, because it's always just like a new video game. So it zooms out and the kid is like not a kid anymore. He's like a 29 year old man. And he's like, I guess I gotta go to work now. And like, that's the end of this, the end of all the anime is just like sets it down and goes to work. And then just like his son the picks most it up. Thing ever. Yeah. No, his son picks it up. They start back at one remaster everything, <laughs> but they remaster it. Like they did the Mewtwo movie. Yeah. And everything's like computer animated. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. 
Hey, Wood, let's get on that Pokemon. Hey, you can give it the old Power Ranger treatment. I'll send, I'll send you my uh, I'll send you my details so we can be paid accordingly. I just <laughs> want a booster box of Lost Origins. Like that's it. That's all I care about. So we're we'll... ten cases of Lost Origins. Yeah, I'll take ten cases too. Oh, back on Lost Origins. Sorry, we got sidetracked thinking about uh, um, the scarlet and violet leaks and how it's not cool to you know leak the whole game we got to talk about these alt arts bro hold on i'm pulling them up for me i don't know what you're doing you're probably over there playing runescape or something yeah dog that's what i do now i play runescape yeah. i i gave a pokemon play runescape uh... we have to talk about this giratina full art i wait hold on i'm trying to secret rares yeah or alt art, not full art. Full art's dumb. Oh my god, bro! You have oh, this even... Giratina V. Is yeah. that the one you're talking about? Yeah. This That's thing looks unreal. Busy. I can't. No, no, I no, I'm not not a fan. <laughs> you're not a fan of that, bro. That card I'm... is delicious, <laughs> dog. I'm a fan of the art. I'm not a fan of this being a playing card. I'm not a fan of four of these being on the field and me trying to like decipher what the hell's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot you'd have a problem with that. But I also don't care that you're going to have a problem with that because that card is delicious. I want them. I'll never get them. But I will... I'm a huge fan of the Galarian Berserker V altar. Because that man speaks to me. He's all about his money. Oh, he's scheming, bro. He's got the cold bottle caps on the table with the pen and paper with the post-it notes, bro. He's like, go ahead and sign right here. <laughs> My man is scheming right now. <laughs> this Rotom is next level sick, too. I was going to say, like, I might, I might get you that for Christmas. I might get that as a back piece tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> she <laughs> that'd be actually kind of sick dog <laughs> i'm over here thinking small ball like yo i'll just i'll sauce my man up a graded one of these for christmas or something and he's like yo back piece tattoo baby let's go cool. <laughs> you should get like one of those like artists you know who like paints the art so you can get yeah. all the uh the the text off of it and just have like the picture and then take it to a tattoo shop and be like, I want this on my back. Or I could just get the tattoo artist to draw it like that before he oh. puts it on my back because you know, they're artist first Fair tattooer enough. second. Fair <laughs> enough. I thought it'd just be easier to have it done, but I guess no, Fair it enough. turns out they know how to do that. Because, or, or you know. actually <laughs> just have all the text and everything on it too. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Like on your shoulder blade right here, on your back shoulder blade is the V. <laughs> is this a uh, is this a precursor though to a new Rotom phone, a new Rotom form? The Rotom look, laser. The fan. Well, no, we got the fan. We got the mower, right? We got the microwave, the fridge, the washer, right? And the vacuum, because the rest of them are items. The rest of them, you know, you got your great catcher, your great oh, potion, you noticed, bucket. You noticed it. Damn it! I was, I called it the great, the the Rotom laser, and you noticed it was a Pokemon catcher. No, you know, and you got your rods. You know what I'm saying? But and we got I a Rotom a lamp, vacuum, a Rotom vacuum, a Rotom I, lamp. I think that's. Oh yeah, you got fan. Where's the mower at? I think it's that's right the there. mower. No, the yeah. mower's right there. The, uh, like, the mower's laying on top of the washer with a vacuum underneath it. Oh, yeah, that's the vacuum. I, like, thought that hose was, like, on the, uh, on the, the mower. So I thought the mower was the vacuum. But now I see it. Yeah. You get the vacuum? Yeah, dog. Rode on vacuum. It's, a uh... Dark type. Because is... vacuums are dark. It's dark in a vacuum. It's Rotom Dark. So Dark Electric? Yeah. Okay. And what about Rotom... Uh, well, there's... Fan what about Rotom Lamp? That'd be um, Electric Electric. Just straight electric. So it's Electric Electric? Yeah. Oh, no. It's just Electric type, but yeah. Yeah. Why not like... Or or Electric Colorless. 
Because what's more boring than a desk lamp? Oh, electric normal, not colorless. Because yeah. colorless, no, it's colorless is rotom fan, bro. No, that's it, that's flying. Yeah, no, but like in the car game, it's it's, it's colorless. Well, you know what I meant. Just yeah. like rotom normal. But electric Why not normal. rotom radio, bro? Bro, that'd be this new sound type that hasn't been leaked, but I'm guaranteeing it's in there. Bro, you have no idea. Like, so many people have been lobbying why this should exist. Like, they've been setting it up for years and years and years and years. There's sound attacks. There's there's sound items. There's all this stuff, right? And they would be the way to fix fairies, like, absurd power level. And, like, that's what they're doing. They're giving us Rotom Radio, and that's going to be sound type. I don't know if I like sound type. Can we call it something else? Um, wave type. No, wave. No, no. Just, just noise type. Music type. I don't know, bro. Sound yeah, makes I sense. I guess sound just. Yeah. I guess electromagnetic rate. Uh, <laughs> I'm just playing. Sonar type. No, because it's not just sonar, bro. You don't need throat lozenges for sonar type. Throat <sighs> spray? Okay, fine. We have a gold collapse stadium. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. That Rotom is delicious. I wanted to look at it. There were some other things I wanted to talk about it. Why would you get this on a... Oh, there's an escape rope in there, too. Why would you get this on a back, bro? A back piece. Why not on a play mat? You can get on a play, man. Gaming.com, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you what. All your custom gaming needs over at inkedgaming.com. You can get dice bags, dice, mice, trice, thrice. I'm just playing. Play mats, mouse pads, keyboards, deck boxes, whatever you need customized, they do it over at inkedgaming.com. All you need is the picture you want and our affiliate link in the show notes below. That's all you got to do. That's it. I'm just saying. You head on over to inkedgaming.com. Appropriately locate the spot that you want your picture put on and hit order. And if you use our affiliate link down below, you can help us out and help the homies out over at inkedgaming.com. Okay. I have not been following Pokemon as religiously as I want to, but there is something that I have, and I've been trying to hold my tongue on this for the last few weeks. I wanted to keep myself at bay because I didn't want to bog our podcast down. But I can't keep quiet no more, ladies and gentlemen. NHL free agency is upon us, and I have to. I have to talk about it. Because so much has happened, and I have homies out there that need my takes. Actually, nobody needs my take, but I'm giving it to you anyway. And we're going to start off with a big one. Scott, I know you are a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. I am well aware that you support the Tampa Bay Lightning. Do you or do you not support the Florida Panthers? Uh, no. I mean, let me put an asterisk there. If they are against any other team that's not from Florida that I don't care about, then yeah, I will root for them. But um, that is only saying if I'm already watching a game and they just happen to be playing it. I won't go out of my way to watch a Florida Panthers game, no. Okay. Well, Friday night, I was laying sound asleep in my bed. Well, I wasn't asleep. I was on my phone in my bed. And I get this message out of the Discord. And it's from my boy, Appa. He said, damn, Matthew Kachuk to Florida. I said, what? So, for those who don't know, Matthew Kachuk is a generational talent player out of Calgary. He plays for the Calgary Flames. And they had two generational talent players, one named Johnny Goudreau. And he goes to Columbus, of all places. This man took less money to play in Ohio. He's not even from there. <laughs> Although Columbus is kind of goaded. I ain't going to lie to you. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is, is, is so he leaves in free agency. Calgary gets nothing for him. Well, then Matthew Kachuk, the other generational talent in Calgary, 
informs them that he will not resign there. So they have to trade him. Yeah, because you don't want to lose both of your greatest players for nothing, right? Right. Cool. Like, it makes sense. Calgary's got to do what they got to do. They're, they're going to have to start rebuilding. So Florida calls them. <laughs> Florida calls them and offers up Jonathan Huberdo, who scored 115 points last week. Or not last week. Jesus, last season. I guess that was like last week. But... Mackenzie Wieger, a first-line defense pairing, a prospect, and their 2025 first-round pick because they did not have the 2023 first-round pick or the 2024 first-round pick. So they literally mortgaged their future and gave up their defensive core (laughs) to get this guy. And then Matthew Kachuk promptly signs a $9.5 million a year contract, which is all well and good. But I want to know, Scott, I want to know from you as a man, before I say what I think, would you give up half of your team for one player and your future? Um... Now, mind you, the guy that they gave up for Matthew Kachuk Scored the same amount of points last year. Um, I guess like somebody in that squad is looking at like they they are betting on the fact that he's going to be a better player there than the people that are giving up, right? Um, or maybe it's a money thing. Maybe they're like, okay, well, if we give up this much. Um, and then we only pay this much for the same quality that affords us this much money, this much extra money to um, build up the squad of young people. So uh, it's sketchy. They're, they're definitely gambling on the fact that they could pick up a young talent to make up where you know they lost. But um, I don't know. I don't know if I could make that call. I probably wouldn't. You know, like I'd probably be more okay with picking up less new talent and training them up and just like keeping my talent level the same for the first, you know, for a couple of years, but that's why I don't, you know, manage a sports team. So. Yeah, I could see that. And I, at first, like when I first thought of this, I was like, Oh shit, dog, like Florida's in our division and they just got better. And then Ottawa got better. We got better. Tampa Bay is Tampa Bay. Toronto is Toronto. So like, it's a bloodbath, our division. Um, I say us like I'm on the team, but that's fine. I am on the team. <laughs> but then I got to thinking about this, right? And Huberto and Uyghur are both going to be free agents next year. I don't think they're going to be able to sign both of them. All right. So it makes sense to unload those kind of contracts to bring in a guy like this. But it makes them worse now, but possibly better in the future. But I would say that they were better in the future if they did not already give up all of their first round draft picks. Yeah. So like I mean, sure, but look at historically in hockey, first round draft picks haven't been as explosive as you know, second true. or third. You know what I'm saying? That like is, just because you're giving up your first round draft pick does not mean that you're not going to be able to have the ability to pick up solid players, you know? Mm-hmm. That is true. And then I look at Calgary's situation. Like, they're going to be able to, like, rebound from losing those two guys and really, like, turn the franchise around quicker. Um, because even if the two, uh, Huberto or Uyghur don't sign there, they can just trade him for a fuck, a fuck ton of assets, bro. But, yeah, I, like, I saw that trade and I was like, I have to talk about this because, like, it's huge. Like you don't get trades like that in the NHL too often and they have to be brought up. And uh yeah. Also the Red Wings signed five players, completely revamped the team. I'm expecting playoffs next year. And God bless every single one of y'all if that happens, because I'm gonna be in one. <laughs> I'm just I'm excited for the Red Wings just because the the rookies from last year, uh now they have a year under the belt, right? They don't have that, you know, mid-season die-off, right? Yeah. And they Hopefully also... they, 
they, they've hit it. Now they're like, fuck, now I got to train harder. So now they're training harder, hopefully. And they're going to come back this year. Absolutely. Like on one, like. Yeah. Uh, and the team's better. New coach, new squad. It's the team's better. It's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting year. March 14th. We're blurring the lines between the Lightning and the Red Wings day by day. You that know, whole division, sure this... bro. I I said I expected playoffs after the signings they made. I kind of still stand by that. But, like, holy shit, this division just got ridiculous. <laughs> like, which How? I think I think the Panthers got worse, honestly, after this trade. But, like, the yeah, Senators... But nobody cares about them anyhow. Have you ever met a legitimate Florida Panthers fan? No. Right. Everybody I, who goes to their games goes to their games because they live in the area. Like I've never once met a diehard Panthers fan. I've met a hockey fan that roots for the Panthers. I've never met a diehard Panthers fan. <laughs> and that's hard for hockey because hockey fans are like, that's their team, you know? Yeah. And nobody says, Oh, I'm a Panthers fan. <laughs> Nobody says that or a Coyotes fan. I, I have I have met Lightning fans before they got big, like and went on this run. I have well, met Lightning fans, and most of those, like, admittedly, were from Tampa, right? Like, yeah, you know, because that's how I started watching the Lightning. Right? Was I lived in Tampa? I'd go watch the Lightning, but um, even then, that was still their team. Nobody's like the Panthers are my team, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and like so I guess the same thing goes for the Coyotes because I regularly forget the Coyotes are a team. A lot of like do. anytime somebody tells me they watch the Coyotes game, I'm automatically thinking like like minor league hockey. I'm like, oh coyotes, yeah, where are they from? <laughs> <laughs> well, they play in a college building now, so <laughs> they're closer to minor leagues than the NHL, but hey, they are an NHL team. But no, like on, I swear to God, I could do a whole two-hour uh, segment on the NHL free agency because this year it was an absolute barn burner. I remember, Scott, I was at work. I was like, Scott, at 11 o'clock, don't call me for nothing. And you're like, <laughs> you're like too fucking bad you work here. And I'm like, yes, I know. But like for real, though, it's the free agent time. I need, I need some time to process. But I didn't slack so off at work. <laughs> so something I thought about, right? So there are some um, minor league teams, uh, not not hockey, but minor league in other sports, um, semi pro things like that, right? That have taken to uh, multiple teams practicing during the off season together, right? So like, think of it like if you know, if you needed to practice, like it. Like my whole thing is, would you be surprised to hear that the Lightning and the Red Wings scrimmaged all off season to get ready for the next season? No, because they do that. They they help they host a uh, like a summer tournament thing. Um, I I had the name of the, it's up in Traverse City in Michigan, and there's like some oh, teams okay. like. They'll have, like, prospects. They'll have, like, minor league players. They'll have some, like, younger players on the team. Like, um, maybe not, like, you won't see, like, Steven Stamkos at this thing, bro. Like, dude makes way too much money. But, like, the, you know, the smaller players, um, they'll host a tournament in Traverse City. And, like, the Lightning show up to that. Um, uh, and some other teams. So, no, I would not be surprised to see something like that. But I would, like, would you be surprised to hear the like a dedicated like partnership happen between them? Because at this I point, mean, they might had, as well be the same had team. Fucking Steve Eiserman for eight years. We're the same. Yeah, team, now bro. you guys have <laughs> our our old coach is now your head coach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's like we are like one news break our, away. Oh from... fuck, bro! Our head coach that we just fired is now y'all's assistant head coach. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like that's what I'm saying. Like we are one like tweet away from finding out that we are the same team. We just play in two different, two different stadiums. <laughs> You're not wrong. Your jerseys are designed the same, except as blue. <laughs> just saying. I'm pretty sure the sponsors are 
uh, most likely. Exactly I'm pretty sure too. Little Caesars owns the Lightning like, yeah. at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> but no, like I, they, they they're molded the same, right? Like when the Lightning were on the come up, the the Red Wings were like the model franchise to like model your franchise around, and the way they were built, they were built like the old Lightning or the old Red Wings, and now it makes perfect sense that since Iserman did it. He's going to do it in Detroit. Like, so I'm not worried about it, dog. When we get to the playoffs, we're probably not going to be out of that bitch for another 20 years. So (laughs) we just got to get there. (laughs) Probably going to have like eight championships under our belt or something. It's whatever. Change of the guard, dog. Your, your boys will retire eventually. That's all I'm saying. But who knows? I no, it's, it's been an incredible off season for that. And I'm excited for this season. Um, March 14th, Scott and I are going to be going to the game. Yeah. I will be rooting for the Red Wings, just just so we're clear. No, you um, well, I got a jersey for you, bro. Don't worry about I, it. I'll just, I'll just break out my old hat. I still have it uh, from when I was a kid. Do, do, I, do I take this one off the out of the frame? No chance. Absolutely There's not, a reason no. I bought that other one. <laughs> so, with that being said... Um, Something I do want to talk about before we get off here um, is this channel and moving forward because I know we've taken a lot of time, like the last two weeks. We haven't really done anything. Matter of fact, I just looked at my YouTube statistics the other day, and the last time we posted a video was like almost a month ago, um, which is not good. It's not great. Um but that like there's going to be changes in the future um one of the big things i've talked about like a long time ago but never really got it off the ground is the fact that like i don't want floaty cast to like i want us to talk pokemon and be about pokemon but i don't want to dedicate my entire hobbies and my life outside of work and family to one thing cuz i like so many things like i could sit here and talk for two hours scott and i could talk about the story of final fantasy 10 like if we wanted to like i want those options available to us um so moving forward i don't know what kind of direction we're gonna take and it could just end up being that we're just talking pokemon all the time because that's what we're into but i don't want to limit us to just that you know what i'm saying does that make sense yeah yeah makes sense and as far as like these long layovers of like no videos and stuff like that that's probably gonna happen more frequently um because with my daughter going to school and my wife working days Mm. it's time to pony up and be a dad like (laughs) you know it's time to not live on the computer for my whole life and so what that means for the podcast, nothing. We're going to, this is our therapy every week. So, but as far as everything else, really, it's just going to come down to whenever we feel like doing something. I'm just going to be completely honest and blunt. Um, yeah. There's no reason to fucking force ourselves to do something because then you won't get authentic content. You'll get fake shit. And I'm not yeah, gonna... what we what we will promise is authentic content, right? Like, yeah, it may not happen as frequently, but whenever we do something, we will we will want to do it, we right? We'll be real about it. And um, if that means that Scott's over here, like, yo, I got this sick game about cats, bro, and he just starts, <laughs> I don't know, he uploads a five hour playthrough of him playing this sick game about cats. So be it. Like, that's what he wanted to do, and. And if he doesn't upload a five hour video, so that's what he wanted to do. So that's what it's going to come down to. I'm sure when new sets come out and then after worlds and like the season gets started up and that fire is lit again, we'll be, uh, we'll be balling. But until then, like the floor is open. Floaty cast always changes and always evolves and can stop and start at any time. But the podcast will always always go on (laughs) yeah we're we're both incredibly busy in our lives now for various reasons like you said he needs to take time to be a dad and i've 
decided that at 34 years old, I need to go back to school. So, um, yeah, that too. <laughs> so, and you know, I now Max Lowe can attest that like working where we work, it, it takes, takes out of, it takes it out of you too. So well, when you what, get home, you're, you're ready to not, not be doing anything. Well, so. the one thing I have noticed about this new job is the responsibilities. Like, yeah, I mean, at any job you're going to have responsibilities, but like military aircraft shopping carts. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. So like the responsibilities and like the decisions you make do play a factor a lot more than what they used to. So like mentally I am drained when I get off work. Like that's, that's no joke. Physically I'm, I'm in peak shape. Just getting fatter, <laughs> baby. Let's go. <laughs> but like mentally, I'm. But I, I literally just want to fire up a mindless video game and just like play for six hours until I go to sleep or like watch a TV show or something. Um. So, but like I said, most importantly, family first, and it's time to uh step up and be a father. So we're not. We're not. We're. There's no reason to ever say we're just retiring. I always joke about retiring, but like this is something I can just like turn on the the computer screen and just fire it up whenever I feel like it. And that's how this is going to go. So just going to point that out there. Um Scott, if you have any closing thoughts, have at uh, it. Do <laughs> No. Can I do no, the plugs today? <laughs> you want to do the plugs today? Yeah, I'll do the plugs today. All right. So here's my closing thoughts, right? Um, take care of yourself. Take care of your mental health. Um, a lot of us are drained. A lot of us are the post-world depression and stuff like that. But a lot of us are just at this point in time, the end of summer, things like that. A lot of people take a hit mentally. Um, take care of yourself. Get help if you need it. Reach out if you need to talk to anybody. Um, and uh, enjoy the last bit of summer we have. It's been a hot one here here where we are. Um, but, uh, you know, get out and enjoy yourself before the summer ends because it's coming up quick. And you can hit the plugs. All right. Uh, so you can subscribe to our YouTube. Uh, these podcasts will be on YouTube now for real. Now that I'm not, like, trying to crank out 72 deck profile videos, I can, like, take some time and really spoof up our podcast videos and start focusing more on this this is the most important thing so podcast will be up on youtube check that out uh you can follow us at twitch at floaticast or oh, floaticast at youtube as well scott's at floatyk1 on twitter and i am at max floaticast on twitter as well m-a-x-f-l-o-w-t-k-a-s-t and scott is floatyk1 f-l-o-w-t-k-1 on twitter Leave a rate and review. One to five stars. You can say whatever the hell you want, honestly. It don't affect me. I wasn't crying to one negative vi vi uh, review at work. Not a big deal. So <laughs> you can do that on po uh, Apple Podcasts, and then you can leave a uh, rating on Spotify as well. And like I said, Sundays will record. Mondays, this will be out. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.